We are the West Indies, every bat and ball. When it comes to the game of cricket, live the passion. Welcome back. The West Indies faced a daunting target of a record 418 in the final innings at St John's to avoid that 4-0 result. But with still a little over two days to play, anything was possible given Brian Lara's demeanour in the first dig. The left-handed opening duo of Chris Gale and Devon Smith survived a testing 24-over spell late on day three to finish at none for 47 at stumps. The Australian pace attack broke through the next morning though, sending Gale and then Smith back to the rooms inside the opening 30 minutes. Well bowled and gone. So two wickets going very early on and once again Gillespie gets Smith. That brought the captain Brian Lara to the crease who was determined to reach three figures after missing out in the first innings. We rejoin play now with the Windies two for 56 in their second knock midway through the morning session of day four. Lovely shot. He does play that shot well. A small man and comes up to waist height, but he's able to get up on his toes and slash it past the point. He does that very, very well. It's one of his favourite shots and he hits it well. Lovely shot again. Probably a better shot than the first one. More of a genuine cut shot. That's well bowled and he's gone. In swing in Yorker. Club in front. You can't write off a champion bowler, Ben McGrath. When you least expect him to get a wicket, he will come up with the goods. Magnificent delivery from Glenn McGrath. Well, that third centre partnership won't be seen in this series. In swinging Yorker from Glenn McGrath. Trap staring anger right in front of off stump, hitting middle stump. No doubt about that. Superb piece of bowling from Glenn McGrath. David Shepherd agrees with Glenn McGrath's appeal there. And see the jubilation on Glenn McGrath's face as Darren Ganga goes for eight. West Indies in more trouble at three for 74. And that's a lovely on drive. Just a push and goes for four. Nice timing from uh, Sawan. We spoke about his technique, and you don't play an on drive any better than that. Slowish, half volley, full face of the bat. Beautifully played. And Jason Gillespie, who is at wide mid on, just went and fetched the ball. That's gone straight down the ground. Got to the pitch and lofted it right over the fence, Brian Lara. So a six coming off the last, delivering that over. It's 117 for three. Yeah. That's a good shot. That will go all the way. No protection out there for Sawan. There is one for, for, for Lara, but no protection there for Sawan. It's just a long up from Steve Watt. Well, there's no fielder down there. Any of them take that catch, still six. I think Brian Lara has dominated Stuart McGill a fair bit and that's why we didn't see Stuart McGill bowl a great deal in the first innings when Brian Lara was on the go. That's just as good as the six he hit previously. That's gone even further. I hope those cars are well insured. That has brought up Brian Lara's half century. It's almost as though he took it as a disrespect that the bad pad came out. Because uh, the previous one went a fair distance, but this one has gone even further.
Well played. Found the gap on the offside this time. Another boundary. Well played. He won't catch that, Jason Gillespie. That's another boundary to Brian Lara. It's 157 for three. There goes Lara, magnificent through extra cover for four this time. Getting to the pitch of the ball and playing that flourishing extra cover drive, which is one of his trademarks. Well, he's got the John Daly backswing. I don't think he's trying to hit it to the fence. I think he's trying to knock the fence over. That's slow motion. Ah! Boldam went to hit him for another six. Lara's got his middle stump knocked back by McGill. That's the big breakthrough for Australia. And Stuart McGill has got his revenge as Lara went for another big one and missed. Well, won't Stuart McGill be happy having that one? Lara won't. It was a perfect delivery. Left him short, left him reaching for the ball, spun back through the gap, and it's hit right on middle stump. Lara trying to hit him out of the ground again. Just watch this. Spun it beautifully, dropped short of him there, back through the gate. Oh, it's just got the top of that stump too, but Stuart McGill, he's got his revenge. Look at it there from front on. Beautiful delivery there. Not what you call a very good shot from Brian Lara. Wrong one to go for. Huge wicket for the Aussies. 165 for four. He's clobbered that. Chandapal goes for four. Come out with aggressive intent, Chandapal. Looks to me as if this is a Chandapal who got that 100 of 69 deliveries in the first test match. Yeah, he's been positive in this series uh, in the starts that he has got. And then we went on with it where we saw that uh, quick fire century. Oh. He just slapped that back past Stuart McGill. Hit with a lot of power. Nice words, Ian. A slap is exactly what he did there. It wasn't a cover drive, a straight drive. It was like having a bat and your little, your little son's bit in naughtiness slapped him on the bottom. More runs. And he's gone away. Darren Lehman, too slow once again. 50 for Ramner Sawan. 16th half century in Test match cricket. And immediately coming around the wicket to Chandapal. The wind blowing across the screen from right to left. Edged and gone past Martin Love at slip. Very late to react. Reputation of being a very good slip catcher, Martin Love. Let's wonder if this carried. He certainly is that, and you're right, he didn't react quite late. Look like Shandable got into position and steered it down that way. And that's what he did. And it may be just wide and just short, maybe. And yeah, just a bit too wide for Martin Love. But that is uh, how you give slip catching when you've got a bat in your hand. But first ball, McGrath. And around the wicket, he got the outside edge, although it was hilt. Well, she ended up chasing it. Got it through. There is no extra cover. Brings up the 200 for the West Indies. It's 203 for four. Very powerfully hit. Made that look easy, Shanga Paul. Oh. Just digging it out. 
but uh, Simon's foster parents, so he's lived with them since he was a, a young boy. And uh, they live in Australia. Oh, a few words now. Yeah. Well, we've had a few words in this uh, match already. Ben Catrago comes up to have a word with, uh, with the two of them. 236 for four. Hit that pretty well. And that's going to go all the way. That's a good hook shot. Hooked it down this time. And so perhaps he's been working on that. It's quite often hooks up. But now he rolled his wrist, got right over it. Yeah, McGrath isn't really ripping him through. This could be setting him up to hopefully have a go at the next two that come on that are much quicker. Let him have a go at that, get that one away. That, uh, you know, that might be good and bad. That ends the over, so we might see the new ball coming now. 2.53 for four. Here's what happened between uh, overs. Shouting, screaming and pointing of fingers. Now, a couple of the Australians getting in there. We can't uh, suppose what has happened, of course. In the air, and lucky for Chandapal, he lost his bat. Lucky for him, the ball just uh, traveled wide of the fielder. But uh, that incident a while ago, quite ugly between Sarwan and McGrath. Started in the previous over, running between the wickets. Now Sarwan will come into the strike. A lot of booing going on as McGrath goes down. Some. Applause as well as uh, Jeff Thompson was saying. He's right in between the popular side with the local crowd out there and then the Australian visitors just to his right as he comes in now and he's now being switched to places and Hayden will go back on the boundary. He's pulled that away, and that'll go for four more. That's his 50. Ramnaresh Shawan has come back with injured finger and all, and got a very good half century as the West Indies move on to 272 for four. Half century off just 73 deliveries. That's his ninth four. And he's gone for it. He's hit it two bounces into the fence at mid-wicket of Brett Lee. Saremna so Sarwan has been under pressure verbally from the Australians, goes to 98. And he has brought the crowd to their feet, both sections of the crowd. And there's a buzz around the ground. 100. What a moment for Ramnaresh Sarwan. He has put up with it all. He has scored 100 against the best side in the world, the best bowling attack in world cricket. He'll get the applause from the Australians as well, so very good of the Australians. There's been a lot of verbal stuff between both sides, but acknowledgement from everybody. Kirtley Ambrose and Ramnaresh Sarwan, his second Test 100. And, well, the sportsmanship is there when it has to be there, and that is probably the... The most important visual moment of the day. What an hour of cricket this has been. He's gone again, it's in the air, and that's a bad shot, and Lee's got him. Lee and McGrath must have worked it out because Lee's gone straight to McGrath and said, thank you very much, Glenn. So they set it up, and on 105, we made the point, shot selection was the most important issue and he's made a poor shot selection. The hook shot's brought him undone yet again. That's right. And uh, a little bit of ambivalence, simply because he played a great innings. But the hook shot is not his forte, it's not his strength. Played one to get to 99, and Lee accepts it gleefully. 
finally a caught and bowled for Brettley as well. Australia back in the hunt. Doors are open once again. Ramner Sawan, well played 105, 288 for five. Lee with a wicket under his belt. And the brand new ball, and he's hit it. He hit his arm, where's it hit? Where's it hit? David Shepherds, they're asking him, he's out. Brett Lee's on a hat trick. Lee charged in, and really Jacobs couldn't cope with the pace. We saw him get tangled up in the first inning with shortish deliveries, and he has done exactly the same in the second. So Australia have just turned the world back into them. One brings two. Ridley Jacobs is not convinced that uh, this has come off the bat or the glove. The Australians were absolutely convinced. The Indian fans are stunned. Because once again, Australia pushed themselves out in front in this test match. Two wickets in two balls. Let's have a look at what this hits. Nowhere near the glove, nowhere near the bat. Off the elbow of Ridley Jacobs. Not a good decision by Empire Shepherd. Jacobs cannot believe it. He's gone for naught. 288 for six. A pretty good situation here with bottles being thrown on the ground. The crowd have seen the replay. And we have another similar situation that we've had before where technology has to be addressed. We spent over a minute worrying about a single run when Justin Langer went to the boundary to stop a boundary. We use technology for a single run, but we can't use technology to show what a decision that was from David Shepard, where quite clearly he missed the ball, hit him on the arm, and yet the lack of technology creates more drama than using it. So Lee, the chance for an Australian hat-trick. Three steps in the gully, bat pad. He punches it past. Bick will do the chasing. They'll get a couple of runs. And they'll look for three to get Shandival back on strike, but unable to. So policemen still on the ground clearing some of the debris out at mid-wicket. In the air. Drop. Mud Love has dropped a sitter at first slip. Easy viewing. He is such a good slip swordsman and he has made a mess of that. I keep hearing how good he is as a slip fielder, but in this test match he hasn't shown that form at all. He's had a couple of close chances and just bursting through his hands, the pace of it. Flew off the edge. And just really burst through from the sheer force of it. Didn't get the time to wrap the fingers. Was a bit late in going up as well. And uh, that is uh, a relatively straightforward chance gone begging. He's played the hook shot. And it's gone all the way for six. He got into position early. And he's caught. But that doesn't count. Because his man is over the fence. Oh, that's outstanding stuff. Just thought with the natural eye that Shikharan Chandapal didn't follow through with the shot. Did just a short arm jab. And that has gone a long way. Second new ball coming off the bat with some velocity. Pulled that very hard as well, Chandler Paul, another boundary. Moves on to 98 with that shot, Shivner and Chandler Paul. Well, gee, he's just hitting him better and better. He's over the full toss as he miss it. And then he's got that long hop and he's really smashed that through mid-wicket. Shivner and Chandler Paul on strike, he's on 99. Short McGill, the bowler. That's his 100. Well, there it is. The crowd erupts. That's his wife. That is Larry. And everybody here in this crowd, the Australians, all the locals, absolutely enthralled with the nice cricket. Shader Paul, he just snuck up on this hundred. Sarwan was in there this afternoon. Blazing away. Shader Paul was a quiet achiever, and then he took over from that role. And this has been a top hundred from him.
That's his eighth test century so far, and a very, very important one. Lee around the wicket. Gone, Chandapal goes. Big breakthrough for Australia. Is that the match? Chandapal has added one. Wonderful innings yesterday. Ended today with the addition of only one run. Gilchrist takes the catch. Thick edge. Glum faces for West Indians, but it isn't over yet. It's 372 for seven. Still 46 more to get. Disappointment there for Chandapal. This ball, I think, has got to be wired just by the way. Looked like he played at it. Certainly is. Just moved off the pitch a little. Good low down catch there from Gilchrist. Now that's a huge wicket for the Aussies. He's the man they wanted to remove. It's going to be difficult now for the West Indies. A lot of pressure on the tail. 372 for seven. Flicked away. There are two men there, but it may go between the two of them. It has. The first boundary of the morning between Gillespie and McGill. And the attempted Yorker strained down leg side and flicked away nicely in between the two men who are out there for the hook shot. So a boundary, and it's down to 36. Slashed away again. It's going through the covers. Will it get to the fence? It will. Four runs. Bickle during the chasing, in the end he got himself in a bit of a tangle and had to dive the same way the ball was going. Misread his jump. And another boundary. Cut shot, oh. cut shot past the man at Gully and Hayden. Did he get a hand to it? Will it go for four? It's being pursued vigorously, four runs. It went quite sharply past Hayden's right hand side. And I think the ball had actually gone past him before he actually closed his hands. So not a chance, but an invaluable boundary down to 23. He went hard at it. That was the key. He went hard and it flew off. He took a brilliant catch to dismiss Brian Lara in Trinidad, Matthew Hayden. It just might be a costly half chance. He's gone for it, the man's up. Will it go for six? Will it go for six? Yes, it will, the top of the grandstand. So against the leg spin of McGill, it wasn't quite a half volley, but it nearly went two parishes away. It was stopped by the top of the grandstand. That is a massive blow, and it's down to 16 with three wickets in hand. Absolutely fantastic shot from Basper Driggs. He's been very, very positive in this innings. This is huge in terms of distance and psychologically. We thought about it again. That would have hurt the Australians, a six followed by a four. Gus Logie applauds the end of the over. They're over 400. This is just the 13th time in Test cricket history. They need 16 to win. Banks on 39, the aggressive Drake's 19. Four runs. Over the top of the stumps, four runs down to 10 runs to win, 12 runs to win. So you need some luck. Gillespie's not getting it. Drake's on 23, Banks on 40, and that ends the over at 407 for seven as drinks come onto the oval. Well, Amari Banks was thinking of a run, while the Australians were thinking of a wicket. Basberg Drakes was thinking, is the finger going to be going up? That's the one out the front of the hand from Stuart McGill, skidding on. Oh, that is absolutely plumb, I think. I think that's hitting middle stump, halfway up. Another world record, the highest total chased in the fourth innings and successfully getting there. Well, that might be late by, but it's going a long way. we we'll wait on umpire Shepard, it gets to the boundary now, it's runs. Four more runs to Amara Banks. That moves him on to 46, and the West Indies creep yet closer. 
A handful of runs required. Spira thought from Mervyn Dillon in the dressing room. He's next in. That's powerful hit, and that's it. The West Indies have won. Basper Drakes has hit the winning run, and what a win for the West Indies. Set a target of 418. A world record victory, this by the West Indies. The biggest total ever chased in the fourth innings to achieve victory. Brian Lara is happy. The West Indies are very happy. And why shouldn't they be? It's a magnificent victory. And done without Brian Lara's great contribution. He made 60, very important 60, but he was out a long, long time ago. And with all the drama that occurred yesterday, all the confrontation, there's great spirit between these two sides. And what a moment for Test Cricket. 19